All right, welcome back to New Testament Survey. As we continue our study of the books of the New Testament, we come to the book of Galatians. This is the first of Paul's epistles and written very early on in his ministry between his first and second uh, missionary journeys. We give it the sub summary title, Liberty in Christ, the idea of being free from the law uh, and, the, and the works of the law for salvation. And we begin with our the author itself, Paul. Authorship is virtually unquestioned by anyone. In fact, uh, the book of Galatians, along with 1 Corinthians and Romans and the book of Ephesians, uh, are considered the canon of Paul, that uh, any other writings of Paul are many times uh, uh, pointed to the book of Galatians, Ephesians, uh, Romans, and 1 Corinthians as uh, to, to measure up, do they actually measure up with these other books? Uh, Galatians being the very first of Paul's writings really uh, uh, focuses on Paul's uh, ministry altogether. The idea of the gospel uh, is salvation or justification by grace through faith. Uh, the last eight verses especially are written by Paul because he actually says, I am writing these to you. Now, Paul probably used an amanuensis or a secretary uh, to to actually pen the contents. Uh, many times uh, the handwriting of people wasn't very good. Uh, Paul and himself even says, look at what large let letters I'm writing to you with, indicating that he, was, he himself was writing it <clears throat> and that the amanuensis probably had better penmanship than he did. Uh, the recipients then, the geographical area, uh, which is Asia Minor, or modern-day Turkey, this is really the eastern portion of the uh, of Asia Minor as compared to the western portion, which is where Ephesus is. Uh, in the uh, third century became a third century BC became a Roman province uh, with uh, close ties to Rome itself. The founding of those churches probably on Paul's first missionary journey. We see. Uh, uh, the uh, the towns of Lystra and Derby uh, and uh, and Pisidian Antioch those cities uh, are all uh, uh, a part of the Roman province of Galatia. Now there is another Galatia uh, that's actually kind of further north, which is sometimes considered ethnic Galatia, which is where the Galatian people were from. But we have no record of Paul going that direction, going northern. Uh, into northern northeastern Asia Minor, so probably he's talking to the Galatian province, uh, the Roman province of Galatia, uh, where he had just visited those or just established those first century uh, churches uh, on his first missionary journey. Uh, you can see here in the uh, in the the on the map here, Lystra, Derby, Iconium, all the way up in here to Antioch. This is the region of Galatia. All right. The purpose of the book is to prove that Paul was, in, in fact, a genuine apostle selected by Christ himself. There was a lot of question as to whether, as to what Paul's authority was, and in these first epistles written by Paul, uh, his authority is questioned the most, and so he's spending a lot of time proving that he himself was an apostle, just like Peter, just like James, uh, or just like the uh, those 12 apostles in Jerusalem, and those who had, had uh, been with Jesus during his earthly ministry. Paul came much later uh, to reaffirm that salvation is by faith alone. People are saved, justified by faith, and then they are to live by faith in sanctification. Uh, so we're saved by faith, but we're also to live by faith. We, we're not saved by faith, and then uh, we should then live out that faith, live out that faith by works. Uh, we're not earning sanctification or earning brownie points with God by by doing those good works. Uh, and to remedy the fallacy of legalism and defend the principle of Christian liberty that we are in fact saved by grace. 
uh, through faith and that we are then uh, sanctified, that we're uh, able to live in liberty, that we are to, uh, we're uh, free from the law, free from uh, the works of the law, and to show how a believer can mature in the Christian life by walking instead in the Spirit or by the Spirit, that that is what will propel us to good works, not trying to uh, accomplish the law or uh, accomplish good works on our own through our own uh, abilities, but rather walking by the Spirit in faith. Uh, again, it will still be life-changing, we will life-altering. We will be doing the works of the law, but not because we're trying to accomplish them in our own efforts, but because we're walking in the Spirit by faith, then we will be sanctified and we will uh, we will be doing good works out of that uh, that life changing experience with the Spirit. Key verses. Then he this is a uh, he goes straight into these Galatians. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, but that uh, that but there are some of you who trouble you, some who trouble you, and want to distort this gospel of Christ that uh, Paul had presented to them. Uh, these were what these are what are called uh, the uh, the Judaizers. Those who pe those people who came in and said, "Yeah, but you really need to to convert to Judaism, be circumcised, celebrate all the Jewish." customs, celebrate all the Jewish feasts in order to be saved. You must become a Jew and do everything according to the law. Uh, of course, that is certainly not the case, and he's uh, he's writing to them very quickly after his, uh, his uh, meeting with them. This is probably written after the uh, uh, Jewish council in which the Jewish, or the first Christian council in Acts chapter 15, in which they were told, you do not have to follow the law. You do not have to be circumcised. Uh, and so Paul is right into the Galatians telling them, you don't need to listen to those Judaizers. <clears throat> Key word, law 25 times, faith 20 times. And so you can see this, uh, uh, by when we look at the central idea here, Christ has freed the believer from bondage to the law and from bondage to sin and placed him in a position of liberty. Uh, distinctive features then, a severe and forceful and stern message of correction to these Galatians. I can't believe you have already turned away from the gospel. There's no words of praise from Paul at the beginning of this book. He doesn't start out with, I thank my God every time I, I think of you. Instead, he just lays right into them immediately. A declaration of emancipation from legalism. An emphasis that justification and sanctification are by, are by grace through faith and not by works. We, uh, I've put in the notes for you a comparison chart between Galatians and James, and I want you to look at those that comparison chart and see the difference between how James uses the word justification, talking about vindicating our faith, whereas Paul talks about justification as in how we are justified before God. Uh, and you, I want you to look at that and study that uh, that comparison chart there. So that's the book of Galatians, uh, and is really ultimately James and Galatians need to be read together because they're two sides to the same coin. All right.